Hello, today we're going to be looking at the Palette 2S Pro from Mosaic Manufacturing along with their Canvas Hub. Now, Lulzbot 3D printers have supported my channel for a number of years and now they've announced they're partnering with Mosaic Manufacturing to provide the Palette as a multi-material solution. The Palette is a machine which takes four material feeds and splices them automatically to change colour or material when you want so that you can print with a single extruder and make multi-colour or multi-material prints. It'll also do some other things like do auto-filament run-out detection, so you could use the ends of three or four different spools that you've got left, and it'll automatically switch between them as they run out, so you can use up all those ends of the spools. It also has a control panel that does some automatic things like gradient between those, but of course you can set up some actual colour prints painting the surface of those prints and different regions or different models merged together and make a multi-material print. So I've got the Palette 2S Pro here, I've also got the Canvas Hub and this is basically a Raspberry Pi compute module running Octoprint with Wi-Fi so that will connect to your network and that means you can send stuff to the printer from Canvas which is the online solution for slicing and that stuff all happens automatically and wirelessly. But let's talk about filament. So you may be aware that the Lulzbot range of printers use 3mm or 2.85mm filament and the palette uses 1.75. So Mosaic Manufacturing have come up with some conversion kits for all of the Lulzbot printers, both those with the E3D Titan Aero and also the older extruders with the Greg's Wade extruder and the Hexagon hot end. You can find full details on the Mosaic Manufacturing website about how to install those. Now it does involve putting a piece of PTFE into your extruder which means that you can't print over 240 degrees anymore but it is reversible so you can still go back to 3mm filament for those specialist exotic filaments. So I've had the palette for a couple of weeks along with this Lulzbot Taz workhorse and I've done quite a lot of test prints so I'm just going to cover the printing process and also tell you about how the prints get better over time because the palette learns through an artificial intelligence learning algorithm about your printer as it goes and you get to rate the prints at the end of the print and if you rate them good it learns positively from what you say and if you say they're bad, then it continues to learn about your extruder so you can get those colour splices in the right place. It all starts with a 3D model. Designed in your choice of CAD software, I use Fusion 360 to make some basic shapes and some of those had multiple parts in them. Then you use Canvas IO, which is Mosaic's tool for slicing multi-material prints, and there are a few different ways you can do it. You can just import multiple STLs and choose which colour you want them to be by selecting different regions and then plonking the colour on them, or you can actually paint the surface of a single STL or multiple STLs. This does use the boundaries, which are the triangles from the STL mesh though, so if you want boundaries in specific places, you're better off importing multiple parts and colouring them in separately. Or you can actually map a JPEG file or some other image format onto the surface of a single or multiple STLs. Just select the object you want to stamp, click on Paint Selected, and use the Stamp feature to load and position the image. And that works pretty well, you can position it over edges and in any place you want and you can scale it and position it onto any of the objects. After that you can slice the part and review how it will look when it's printed so it shows you the tool path and it also shows you the tool path of the purge tower which we'll talk about in a minute. You then send that to the Canvas Hub and that involves having linked your Canvas I.O. account to your hub and making sure the two are connected in Octoprint. Then the file should just automatically appear on the hub and that's in Octoprint and then you're ready to print it. Either from the Canvas Hub in Octoprint or by clicking on Start Print on the palette control panel. The palette then requests which colours should be loaded into which port and it begins splicing them into one continuous feed of filament. It also prompts you when you're ready to heat up the printer extruder and tells you when to insert the filament into the extruder gear. And then the Canvas Hub controls both the printer and the palette via USB connections so you don't need to mess around with any SD cards.
on the whole, my prints came out okay pretty much straight away, and the colours look like they're in the right place. There were a few odd errors on some of the prints where there was perhaps a white line around the print and a couple of colours got switched over on some of the layers, but I kept ignoring those settings at the end of the print or saving them if they're good, and then it seems that the identical print, if I printed it enough times, then eventually it worked its way out, and that should be fixed for all of the prints now the palette's learnt about the extruder on my printer. There's quite a lot of information about this on the Mosaic website, including some much worse looking prints, so I was pretty happy with the results. On the whole though, I was pretty much doing a torture test for this because these prints have the colour switch running on every layer, so I actually use separate regions, separate STLs with the text running all the way through, so it has to actually do a splice on every layer and also purge some of that filament onto the purge tower. When I did the example with stamping, just putting that image and it only puts it on the top two layers, and of course it doesn't have to switch colours on all of the layers, and therefore the print came out looking much better. There are some quality settings you can change as well, including the Z lift, gap fill settings, and the extrusion ratio, and I tweaked a couple of those, and I managed to get quite different results from the first prints I tried like that. So let's talk about that purge tower. Obviously it has to switch colours and it has to purge it somewhere, so it does that on a separate tower. Now the prints where we had to switch on every layer, of course it has to do a purge on every layer, so those purge towers came out almost solid, and I guess that's quite wasteful. On the prints where I only switched on the couple of layers on the top where I did the stamping with an image, of course it doesn't have to purge on every layer. It does build the purge tower up to the right height, but that's pretty much hollow with just bridge top layers. So those things are really light and they haven't wasted too much filament. In terms of quality, Mosaic Manufacturing sent me some examples which look amazing. Apparently these were printed with a 0.35mm nozzle. The Lulzbot printers ship with a 0.5mm nozzle by default, although you could check out the Lulzbot Lulzbot SE 025 mil tool head, which I looked at recently, and that produced some amazing results. So if you really want those detailed colour prints with really clean regions, it's worth looking at a smaller nozzle size. One thing I will say is to check the level of the firmware when you get your palette, and you should definitely upgrade it to the latest version if it doesn't already ship with it on. Mine shipped with version 7 on, and I've just upgraded to 9, and that made such a difference to the splices. There's a new mode called Endurance Mode that made those splices so much stronger, so they didn't fall apart, and they went through the extruder okay. So Mosaic has spent four years perfecting their current closed tube splicing technology, which is basically what's in the splice core of the palette. So it's really important to take advantage of those changes. But what else could we use this for? As well as multicolor prints, of course, we can use multi-materials. So we could do support material in water soluble, or perhaps PETG support with a PLA print, so that it breaks away really easily. So that's something I'd like to do for some mechanical parts to give that dimensional freedom that we don't necessarily get with conventional support material. That's all for this video. Don't forget you can buy the palette or the canvas hub from lolzbot.com. All right, that's all for now.